In an earlier video, we noted that the hydroxyl group is a poor leaving group. This is because the OH hydrogen is potentially acidic and can act as a Bronsted acid, inducing nucleophiles to act as Bronsted bases, and also because OH- is not that stable an anion. For example, it's not the conjugate base of a strong acid. If we'd like to substitute the OH group for something else, we'd like to turn this OH group into a good leaving group, and the most common way that's done is through the creation of what's called a sulfonic ester or sulfonate ester. You'll also hear these referred to in general as organosulfonates. And the sulfonate group includes everything kind of under the blue line here. This oxygen, the former hydroxyl oxygen, along with the SO2R prime group. This is a sulfonate group. And so if R is an alkyl group, for example, we could refer to this as an alkyl sulfonate. The sulfonate group, unlike hydroxide, is a good leaving group. This means that we can apply organosulfonates in nucleophilic substitution reactions with the sulfonate acting as the leaving group and the R group acting as electrophile. We'll explain why that is on the next slide. For now, I want to focus on the different types of sulfonates that you'll see and a little bit more about the sulfonate group itself. So one thing to point out right off the bat is that the sulfonate group contains another group kind of inside it, the name of which you'll also hear. So the SO2R prime fragment specifically, just this bit without the former hydroxyl oxygen, without the oxygen linked to R, is referred to as a sulfonyl group. And the reason that's worth keeping in mind is because the reagent used to install a sulfonate is a sulfonyl substituted reagent. And so you'll see the sulfonyl nomenclature showing up in the reagents used to make this group, and we'll talk about those conditions here in a second. It's going to involve some group, X, we're just going to call it X for the time being, connected to that sulfonyl group. SO2R, and additionally a base is going to be required here to remove the hydroxyl proton. More on that in a second, but just to keep things general for the time being, these are the reagents we'll use to affect this transformation. Now, different types of sulfonate esters can differ, of course, in the nature of this R group, which was in the original alcohol, but also can differ in the nature of this R prime group that's linked to sulfur. And the most common R prime groups that you see are surveyed here down below. Notice that these different sulfonyl groups really differ in the identity of this R prime substituent that's linked to sulfur. And so very commonly we see this as an aromatic substituent. Probably the most common sulfonates are toluene sulfonates or tosylates as they're called. And the abbreviation TS stands specifically for the toluene sulfonyl group. SO2 with the sulfur linked to a para toluene group. Actually, really, this should read para-toluene sulfonyl since the methyl group is located para to the sulfonyl group. When the para group is not a methyl but a nitro, we've moved to the nosyl sulfonyl group, and that's abbreviated with NS. This is a particularly electron-poor sulfonyl group due to the electron withdrawing effect of the NO2 group. Again, that's para-nitrobenzene sulfonyl, or para-nitrobenzene sulfonate, if this is connected to an oxygen, or nosyl for the sulfonyl group, or nosylate for the sulfonate. Methane sulfonyl is very common. The sulfonyl group itself is abbreviated MS. You'll also hear it referred to as mesyl. And methane sulfonyl contains not an aromatic ring link to sulfur, but just a methyl group, just a CH3. And finally, a very electron poor example of a sulfonyl group, again, kind of similar to nosyl in the same spirit of nosyl, is the trifluoromethane sulfonyl group, which is referred to as trifluoro and abbreviated TF. And in this, we have a trifluoromethyl group connected to the sulfonyl sulfur. You'll see all four of these groups in organic structures. They all serve the same fundamental purpose of withdrawing electron density from the alcohol oxygen and setting up a good leaving group in the form of a sulfonate. All four of these, when linked to an oxygen atom, set up a good leaving group in a sulfonate anion. So let's look at that now. When we link up each of those sulfonyl groups with an anionic oxygen atom, we end up with an anion that's heavily stabilized, the so-called sulfonate anions. If you stare at these long enough, you'll realize that they look a lot like sulfuric acid. Let's briefly remind ourselves about the Lewis structure of sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is if you kind of look at it, a hydroxysulfonyl group 
linked to another hydroxyl group. This is the Lewis structure of sulfuric acid. And the reason it's so acidic is due to both the inductive and, and resonance withdrawing nature of the SO2 group with all kinds of resonance structures stabilizing the conjugate base of H2SO4, right? This negative charge that appears in the conjugate base is delocalized over both of these other oxygen atoms. The same kind of effect is operating in the sulfonate anions and explains why these are the conjugate bases of strong acids and therefore, according to our definition of good leaving groups, they are absolutely good leaving groups or as we call them, nucleophages, right? They would like to take a pair of electrons with them to form these anions when they're found in organic structures. And just to survey the most common sulfonate anions, you'll see tosylate, OTS minus is one, with the para-tolo group, you'll see para-tosylate occasionally. Nosylate is the para-nitro sulfonate anion. Mesylate is the methyl sulfonate anion. And then triflate is the CF3 substituted sulfonate anion. And all of these are the conjugate bases of strong acids. I like to refer to these acids, which by the way, the acids themselves are called sulfonic acids. And they're really nothing more than glorified sulfuric acid. If we hit these with a base, and it takes only a very, very weak base to remove this proton in a sulfonic acid, we end up with a heavily resonant stabilized anion in which the negative charge is living on all three oxygen atoms within the sulfonate anion. Let's just really quickly draw some resonant structures to illustrate that. Hopefully these resonance structures make it clear that this is a very stable anion, much more stable than hydroxide. And this explains why conversion of the hydroxyl group into a sulfonate group opens the door to nucleophilic substitutions because we've established a good leaving group within the alcohol substrate. I wanted to briefly mention here the sulfonic acids, the conjugate acids, of each of these anions because you'll see them used on a regular basis as strong acids in organic reactions. And so let's label those in red up above. The conjugate acid of tosylate is called tosic acid. It's just paratosylate with a proton linked to the O minus. And that's, as you might expect, just abbreviated as H-O-T-S. Similarly, the conjugate acid of nosylate is called nosic acid and is abbreviated h o NS. The conjugate acid of mesylate is called mesic acid and is abbreviated HOMS. And the conjugate acid of triflate is called triflic acid. And this is nasty stuff due to the withdrawing effect of the CH3 group. In fact, triflic acid, I believe, is an even stronger acid than sulfuric because the CF3 group is even more withdrawing than the hydroxyl group by induction. And so this is a crazy strong acid, triflic acid, very nasty stuff, but that can prove to be an advantage if we need a really, really strong acid in a particular reaction. And so you'll see these acids used uh, in organic reactions on a regular basis they, because they work very, very well. Um, in particular, tosic acid, which is relatively cheap and abundant, and triflic acid, which is used primarily because of its strength, commonly show up in organic reactions.